Uh, I only started. Um, I only started one game because I was hurt my senior year. So yeah, so in '98, uh, I was a starter, and we won that game here at Clemson. And then in '99, um, the week before is when I broke my, or I mean, I uh, I dislocated my hip at Georgia Tech. Right. So I was out for that game. What's it like playing <clears throat> in this rivalry? Um, man, it's it's an amazing experience. I mean, it's amazing in in many ways. Um, you know, you talk about it all year long. Um, you get to um, have bragging rights for a whole year, you know, and uh, and um, it's it's just always a competitive game, and it's always uh, emotional, uh, personal, um, you know, all the above, and and uh, you try to contain your emotions as much as you can, um, but it's going to be emotional um, just because of um, you know how much. Um, how electric the game is and just how it's built up. Um, you know, two, two really good programs that uh, get to go to battle every year. And it's, it's, a, it's a really, really fun rivalry. I know there's so much history behind it. Um, one of the longest ones in the country. And I know it got disrupted, I guess, in 2020 during the COVID time. But, um, but it's, it's just, a, it's fun. It's just a ton of fun. And, and you know, you get to rally around your teammates. And, and it's kind of what you know, these rival games, these, th that's what you play college football for, you know, and that's why you coach at the college level. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing experience. Brandon, more emotional, stressful as a player or a coach? Oh, man. Wow. That's, that's good. I, I think, you know, it hits in both ways. You know, you got, you're, as a player, um, again, you're thinking about it all year long and you're talking about it all year long. And then, you know, in the end, you know, you're the guy on the field that's got to go do it. And, um, and so there's definitely <clears throat> a tons of emotions and, and um, you, know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pressure to go perform in those games. Um, and then just on the other side of the whistle as a coach, um, you know, you just don't have that physical part of the game. All right? But now it's just a mental challenge and it's a, a chess match and it's a – um, controlling your emotions, how can you get your players prepared and ready to go and uh, contain those emotions as much as possible so you can go execute. And so, and then you can't go out there and do it for them. And, and uh, so just getting them prepared, I think, is the biggest, you know, challenge and, and getting them ready for, you know, these type of games. When you're getting your guys ready for South Carolina this year, you, do you turn on the tape against Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Kentucky, things like that where they were successful? Do you look at Missouri, Florida, where maybe they were less mm -hmm. successful? Yeah. Well, I mean, our, our kids, our, our players watch all year long too, and they see everything that goes on, especially when you're talking about um, a rival game like this and a team that you're playing. Um, and, you know, there is no question, you know, as we saw last week, you know, what South Carolina is capable of doing and what they did. And, um and uh, so they're going to come in here with a ton of confidence, as they should. And um, and our guys know that. Our guys know that and see that. And and um, and it's just going to make us prepare even more and more and, and uh, be ready for it. And um, so, yes, as a coach, we look at, you know, all the different games that they've played and, you know, what kind of schemes they're using and how they used them in different games and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then just try to match personnel best you can and, and uh, you know, have fun with it. Yeah, um, they definitely play a, a lot of man, but they mix up other coverages as well. And they did did play a little bit more, you know, against Tennessee. Um, you know, both their their left and right corner, twenty four and twenty eight, do a good job, man. They they really did a um, a really good job this past week, you know, of preventing some of the bigger plays that Tennessee is used to, um, you know, used to making. Um, and then uh, you know, number nine, Cam. Uh, you know, he, he came in for the first time as a nickel back and really as a corner playing nickel um, and has done a really, really good job there as well. So, you know, so they got three corners that are playing um, a good bit and, and have a lot of confidence, you know, especially after this past game. Coach, you talked about DJ as a runner before, but how do you pick your spots and, and what kind of a weapon is that when you choose when to kind of unleash 
Yeah, you know, he's got to be ready the whole game. I mean, we're going to we're going to have plenty for him um in the passing game and running game as we do every week. Um, you know, anytime you can get that extra hat in the run game and and, and influence people that way, um I think it's it's to our advantage and and like we talked about in the past, you know, DJ has a lot of confidence right now running the football. So, um just being able to complement um, what he does best and, um, you know, some of the play schemes that we have available for him is how we're going to use him throughout the game. But, you know, we'll use it all game long. And, and uh, I know he ran a lot last week, um, but that's part of, uh, you know, that's part of it whenever you're, uh, you know, trying to manuf- manufacture, you know, some rushing yards. And, and uh, we were able to do that last week just in a different way. And kind of like I said, you know, most of the year is um, what's neat about our group offensively is, you know, being able to uh, manufacture either yards or, you know, points or just production in different ways. You know, whether it's a running back running for 100 or 200 yards or a quarterback running for, I think he had 89 or 90 yards last week um, or throwing it or, you know, just mixing it in. And, and that's, to me, that's that's what you want um, in an offense as far as, you know, not, you know, being so predictable and, and just being one-dimensional. DJ's power, <laughs> power. He's very powerful, and uh, I'll tell you what. I, I wish I, I don't have this stat, but making guys miss is very impressive. He he almost every time makes the first guy miss, and that's a combination of um, his vision is very very good, um, and he's going full speed in one direction, and he can change direction very quickly with one step. He doesn't have to patter his feet, break down and then have to, you know, redirect. He can redirect off of one cut, which a lot of people can't do. And so he's been able to, uh, you know, uh, use that move successfully and and and, and uh, has done a good job of making that first guy miss. You couldn't really do that as well last year with his team, right? Yeah, he was, he, was a lot, he was definitely heavier last year, didn't move as well, and then he had the knee, knee stuff too. So, you know, kind of a combination. But he did have it, you know, he did show it a couple times last year. Um, made a guy miss in the hole a couple times, um, but but a lot more this year. He got hurt, I think, his freshman year against Miami when y'all ran that. That's right, power, yeah. I guess, or he did. Did it take some buy-in? Did y'all have to get him to buy into being a runner yeah, more recently? I, I think so. I think, um, you know, that, that hit that he took against Miami, like you said, his freshman year, um, I think he had an AC joint um, injury um, when that happened. And he had a – first off, he had to learn how to deal with injury. He really wasn't used to that. Um, and uh, – but he, he has always been a guy that, that felt comfortable and confident in running power, power-type plays and, and, and running, you know, attacking people and, and, and not afraid of contact. He's always been really, really good at that because of his big body. He's just got confidence in that. And he's got a lot of strength, man. His lower body – is really, really, really strong. And then through the years, the last two years, you know, he's been been able to gain more and more confidence with his speed on top of that and his quickness and his vision. And um, and so I think right now, you know, his confidence as a runner has been has been really good and he's been able to utilize that. You guys were 14 and 19 on third down against Miami on Saturday. When you look back at the game and you see that kind of stat, is that something that gives you confidence with that success rate or is it something that you tell the offense maybe we don't want to put ourselves in that situation yeah, you know, um, third down is always a big stat. You know, you always want to, um, you know, our goal is to be at least 45% uh, conversion on third down, um, you know, for every game. And um, going into the season, that was something we really needed to work on, you know, was our third down percentage. And, and um, you know, we're in the top 15 in the country right now in third down. You know, another thing was red zone. You know, our red zone was not very good last year. We're third or fourth in the country right now in red zone. So, I'm very proud of our offense as far as, you know, those two categories, the main two categories that we really focused on um, have shown tremendous improvement. Um, but third down wise, man, you practice it every Wednesday. And we had a heck of a Wednesday last week um, as far as our third down against our defense. And, and it was it was good because it showed a lot of confidence and um, and uh, and it gains confidence, not in the players, but in the coaches, too. Um, and and so. You know, our players are really confident right now in that situation. 
And, you know, a big part of third down, too, is not getting into third and long. You know, you don't want to have a situation where you're in third and long all the time. And so um, we, we were able to do that. Um, you know, we were pretty productive in those situations, um, like you saw on Saturday. Brandon, you've talked to us a lot the last year and a half, maybe, about DJ's demeanor, his makeup. Um, it seems like the things we talked about in the offseason, he's gone through some of that even during this season. Is there even more appreciation for who he is and how he handles things and how he bounces back when things maybe don't always go his way? Yeah, you know, I, I can't say enough, as you guys know. I mean, I can't say enough about that kid and DJ and his heart and his character and his perseverance. Um, never have wavered in his work ethic. Um, and, you know, we saw some uh, heavy adversity last year, you know. And then he, the, the, the best part about it is, you know, you try to learn from the adversity. And that's what he's been able to do. And, and he had some adversity this year too, but he's able to respond. And, and that's what life is about, right? I mean, life is about how you respond to adversity. And it's not always going to go well. I mean, you all... <laughs> Y'all can look around college football and, and pro football and, and individuals that are stars that are not perfect and that go through adversity every single year. And, and it's, again, it's just how you can respond to that. And so the most impressive thing about DJ is how he responds and how he attacks it and doesn't, um, you know, just doesn't get into a law. He, he always responds the right way. And so that's what I'm most proud of. And, and he's been able to show that a lot this year. It's kind of funny because they've got a quarterback who, much like DJ, came into last season with these massive yeah. expectations and then it didn't go the way that it should have. Do you see sort of similarities in them at all? And obviously very different approaches that they took to, to dealing with that person. Um, yeah, you know, um, I haven't followed Spencer Rattler that much. I know this year. You know, as people say, he hasn't been super consistent, I guess, until this past game. But, um, man, he's a heck of a player. Um, and so it shows, you know, what he's able to do when you look at the, the game this past week. Um, and, you know, really, there's a lot to do with, you know, the confidence of that quarterback. But, but just as important is the supporting cast around him and, um, and then how you deal with it and how you deal with it as a player and how you – um, have to still do your role as a leader. Um, and I know Spencer enough that, um, you know, I know he's a leader too. So, um, but yeah, there, there's definitely some, as far as expectations coming in, a little bit different, but in some ways similar as well, just having those high expectations when you're coming into a program and expected to be the guy that saves everything, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, th that's, that's not easy to handle sometimes, you know. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Brandon, is crowd noise in a rivalry game a little louder, a little meaner, a little more intense? Yeah, it is when you're playing away, especially. Um, you know, uh, we're used to – they haven't been here since um, – when was it? 2018, right? Um, so, it's first off, it's good to be at home in rivalry games. Um, so, yes, it is definitely a much more heated crowd. Um, it's definitely a louder crowd. Um, but like I said, when you're at home and you have the environment and the fans that we have, um, it's always good to be, um, you know, at home here in Death Valley. Uh, but when you go to their place, you know, I mean, it's, it's definitely a, a noise factor. And uh, you got to prepare for that. Yeah, I mean, he, his demeanor, um, I think when I describe his demeanor, I just think of poise. And I think of a guy that, um, you know, there's no stage too big, too big or too bright for him. Um, he's been in a lot of different scenarios now that we've gone through 11 games. Um, and so he really hasn't wavered in any of those situations. And, um, and uh, so – I'm very excited about him and proud of him on what he's been able to do. And, and it really a lot of it, like you're saying, is come, comes down to the poise that he has, especially as a young kid. That's hard to do. Took South Carolina as a tight end, playing some running back. If you needed that from somebody, who would that be in your group? 
tight end playing running back. <laughs> they all they all volunteer for that. Uh, I don't know if we have one particular guy, but man, that, our tight end group has been very versatile too. So, um, you know, Davis Allen can do it all. <laughs> he can do it all. He's been super, uh, super productive in a lot of different ways. But, um, but yeah, I'm sure they would all volunteer to do that any chance they get. <laughs> what do you see from Mitchell Manning? He's given you his big chance in the last couple of weeks. And yeah. How's that changed the dynamic of the offensive line? He was seemed to be like a good backup for a lot of spots. Yeah, you know, um, he did really good against Louisville. Um, you know, had some mistakes, but for the most part was a very productive uh, against Louisville. And first start, you know, I'm sure he had a lot of pressure on him um, to perform well. And so, uh, and then he carried it over very well against Miami, you know, uh, again, just showed us that, that we can be really comfortable with him in there. And, um, and so he's just gaining confidence each week and has done very, very well each week. So, um, so excited about him, you know, getting more and more opportunity. Um, that's what this program is about, next man up mentality, and, and uh, that's what he's been able to do. Going back to the rivalry, it's been somebody who's experienced all levels. If you had to describe it to somebody on the outside, is there, you know, uh, an instance, a happening that, that kind of best describes what it's all about for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just think when, when you're talking about a rival game, first off, you know, I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I didn't know much about Clemson or South Carolina growing up um, until I started getting recruited by, by the schools. And, and, and you just quickly learn um, when you get down here, I mean, immediately how important it is. And you hear about stories across the state of people that literally not just talk about the game, but will save every penny that they have so that they can try to make it to one of these games. And when you hear all these stories about these people doing this and, and finding ways to, to come to these games and really saving up and giving up so many things to come to a game, it makes it personal and it makes it that much more exciting um, because we know that this is not a game just for the coaches and the players. This is a game for the fans. This is a game for bragging rights for the whole year. And uh, when, you, when you think about that and you think about all the different stories that happen um, throughout the year and, and uh, you know, of, of people wanting to get to this game, it makes it that much more special. So, you know, <clears throat> just being able to, to be a part of something like this is – it makes it fun. It makes it memorable. You never forget this stuff. You know, you never forget these games, um, and uh, and that makes it special. What do you think when Coach Sweeney put the countdown clock in the facility? Yeah, I mean, again, it, it shows the priority. You know, and, and that's one of the goals of our program is to win the state championship game, and that's this week. And uh, and and so you know, when you when you talk about that as one of your goals for your program. Man, we're gonna we're gonna put that clock up there so you know exactly how much time you have until you get to play them again. And so um, we obviously are on a you know one game season, week in and week out. But there's always that little asterisk beside the South Carolina game just because of the rival. Brandon, when you were between the time you were a player and then you came back as as a coach, were you as invested in this rivalry as as ever? I mean, when. You know, when Dabo was going through that five bomb stuff uh, a few years ago, and now that you've got a chance to yeah. win eight in a row, do you, do, were you still invested in that? Yeah, you, you always are whenever you're a, a former player. Yeah. Um, you're always, um, you know, looking at the different articles throughout the week leading up to the game. You're looking at uh, the different interviews that are happening throughout the week leading up to the game, and then obviously paying attention you know, to the game. I, I got to come to uh, maybe one or two uh, during that time when I was a player, but since I was a player until I uh, came back here as a coach. Um, obviously, I was coaching at other places at the time, but, but uh, you know, it, it's always in your heart. It's always on your mind this week. Um, and, and so, um, you know, you're invested. You know, you're invested, no doubt, no doubt about it. And so you're always trying to, um, you know, find ways to – get information and pull for your team as you go through the week uh, leading up to this rivalry game. How do you go about explaining the, uh, the meaning of the game to some of the guys that aren't from the area? Yeah, I mean, come to it and experience it. And, uh, and, and, and that 
kind of shows it all, it says it all. Um, that's the number one thing is you try to get them to come to it. So you can not just talk about it and, and, and – uh, but but them actually experience it on game day, um, you know that's what you try to do. That's why you try to get as many recruits as you possibly can on these days um, because it's special and it's it's a it's an emotional deal and it's a personal deal and and uh, and you want those guys to experience it as well. Um, I guess I, I think the biggest would probably be when we won here in '98. You know, um, yeah, it was a. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a. It was a big. It was a big deal. Obviously, again, the two teams we were not very good. You know, we weren't very good. They weren't very good. Um, but it meant the world to everybody that week. And uh, we came out on top. I can't remember the exact score. Fourteen to six or fourteen to something. It wasn't a. It wasn't a high scoring affair. But it was a game that we came out on top. And uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know that was a that was a big memory for for me as a player for sure. You guys carried Coach West and his family off the off the field that day, right? We did, you know, we did. It was his last game, and it was, uh, it was. What was that? Twenty eight nineteen. It was twenty eight nineteen. Oh wow, we scored more points than I thought. But uh, um, quarterback was good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that day. Um, yeah, no, we did. It we did. We carried Coach off, and you know, he was the guy that I played for for four years. Um, <clears throat> really, a special guy, and uh, you know, had a lot of impact on me. And uh, a lot of those players that day. Any questions for Coach from Zoom? Anybody else in the room? Or Matt, go ahead. Brandon, this is, Brandon, this is Matt. I was just going to ask. Uh, now you said you wanted to watch the film and kind of see how the offensive line played. Just what did you think going back and watching? Yeah, they really did good. You know, there was a few things. Um, the few things technique wise that they could clean up on, but that's every game, you know, um, as far as their communication, their toughness, um, physicality, um, they did a really, really good job of. And, uh, and um, you know, and I think, you know, Mitchell did a good job again coming in um, and, and playing a pretty clean game. One of the biggest things that we talked about coming into last week, last week's game against Miami was being more disciplined you know, especially with the penalties. And we had no penalties on offense and, and uh, very few as a total team. And so that was something that, um, like I said, we really wanted to improve on, and we did a lot better job in that game. And then with South Carolina's defensive line, is there anything that stands out about that group? Absolutely. You know, they got some guys um, up front that are, that are very talented. And, um, you know, really all four of them have shown – um, a lot of spark and a lot of, uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of talent. You know, we recruited most, if not all, of those guys um, here at Clemson. And so their defensive line, for sure, is a, is a, is a part of their team that is, is very uh, talented and, and uh, has made some plays. Anyone else for Coach? All right, appreciate it. All righty. Thank you all. Eric Carter will be up next, 1245.